Josh the Lake, welcome to Tibet this week, a weekly news edition on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's have a look at today's headlines. His Holiness the Dalai Lama meets high-level U.S. aid delegation. Sikyong Pimpasri embarks on New Zealand and Australia visit. U.S. Secretary of State to visit China, 42 rights group appealed to focus on rights. China's genocidal modernized tactics instrumental in furthering repression, says UK MP Tim Lawton. 28 Game Chumo Memorial Gold Cup concludes Dasa United Seals' victory over Tuntupling FC. Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation confers Truman Regan Medal of Freedom to Pujung K. Sering. Residential Library of DY, Australia sets a new section for Tibetan books. On Wednesday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama met with a high-level delegation from the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. His Holiness also addressed members of the Youth Buddhist Society of India on Tuesday this week, followed by an address to the students of the 27th Annual Gurukul Program organized by the Foundation for Universal Responsibility of His Holiness the Dalai Lama on Thursday. Now today, uh, when we met people from different traditions, I always respect because one of my commitment is promotion of religious harmony. We Tibetan Buddhist faith and the Parmana Vatika Karika Parmana Sama Sama logic and epistemology. We combine these two things. So as I already mentioned, even Buddha's own word, we raise question, why he, Buddha say that? What is the reason? Uh, we never accept because of the Buddha said, and without any question, accept no. That is not our tradition. We always thinking, investigate. The Central Tibetan Administration hosted the high-level delegation from the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, early this week. During the two-day visit, the delegation received an audience with His Holiness the Dalai Lama at his residence and visited Central Tibetan Administration and met with the Speaker of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile, Kimbo Sunam Tempel, Sikyong Pemba Tsering, Kalun Thalam Doma of Department of Education and Kalun Nonzi Doma of the Department of Information and International Relations. The delegation paid a visit to Tibet Museum and Library of Tibetan Works and Archives, followed by a roundtable meeting with representatives of the Central Tibetan Administration and Tibetan NGOs based in Dharamshala. The delegation was led by Deputy Administrator for Policy and Programming, Isabel Coleman, consisting of Assistant Administrator of the Bureau of Asia, Michael Schiffer, Deputy Mission Director, Karen Klimowski, Deputy Chief of the Staff for Policy, Sonali Kode, Senior National Security Advisor Sophia Lalani, Special Assistant Emily Green, Control Officer India Eileen Lee, Deputy Control Officer Dharamshala Balake De, Communication Lead Martha Wen Lai Shout, and Gender Advisor Ritika Chopra. On Tuesday this week, Sigyon Pembasri embarked on an official visit to New Zealand and Australia. Sikyong arrived at the International Airport in Auckland, New Zealand on Wednesday this week, where he was welcomed by Representative Kama Singe, Tibet Information Office Canberra, President Wang Du Tsering and executive members of the New Zealand Tibetan Association, members of the Chinese Tibetan Friendship Association and Tibetan settlers. Sikyong also interacted with the local Tibetan community on his arrival. During the two-week long tour, Sikyong is scheduled to meet members of parliament, Tibet support groups and the Tibetan communities in the two countries. On Wednesday this week, 42 non-governmental organizations that report on and advocate for human rights in China, Hong Kong, Tibet and Xinjiang wrote a joint letter to the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken days ahead of his forthcoming trip to Beijing on June 18. 
In the letter, the rights groups urge Blinken to call on the Chinese authorities to release all human rights defenders and immediately abolish the coercive boarding school system imposed on Tibetan children. The organizations requested the secretary to use the opportunity of his visit to inform his counterparts in Beijing to highlight the widespread repression and grave human rights violation both inside and outside China and seek accountability to Chinese government abuses. In a letter dated June 14, the International Campaign for Tibet calls on the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to substantively raise the Tibet issue with the Chinese leaders, including by pushing them to resume dialogue with the envoys of the Dalai Lama as the U.S. Secretary prepares to visit China. According to the announcement made by U.S. State Department, Blinken will visit the People's Republic of China and the United Kingdom from June 16 to 21. This week, Tim Lawton, the co-chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet and member of the parliament, called on the UK government and the international partners to curb the growing use of Hikvision and Dahao Chinese CCTV cameras. Hikvision's equipment plays a crucial part in China's architecture of repression and constant surveillance in places like Tibet and East Dagestan. Hikvision cameras are on Tibet's streets, in its police stations and prisons and money from Hikvision sales goes back to the Chinese government. During the debate in the UK Parliament, the MPs called on the surveillance equipment produced by companies like Hikvision to be removed from the UK government's procurement supply chain and called on the government to commit to a plan for a removal of such surveillance equipment. Over 73% of local authorities, over 63% of schools, over 66% of colleges, 54% of higher education bodies, 35% of UK police forces and over 60% of NHS uh, trusts. There have also been subsequent reports that Hikvision cameras are being used on UK military bases, again, as we've heard. So Hikvision and Doawa is prevalent in businesses and popular consumer chains across the UK, ranging from Starbucks to Tesco's as well as news agents. They are literally all around us, Madam Deputy Speaker, yet there's no official survey which identifies the extent of the issue. Now, underpinning China's system of oppression is a high-tech network of surveillance through which China has unleashed whole-scale monitoring and tracking of Uyghur individuals, including biometric data collection of facial imagery, iris scans, and genomic surveillance through mandatory DNA sampling. Organizations like Big Brother Watch, Free Tibet, Hong Kong Watch and Stop Yugo Genocide started the campaign Ban on Higuishin in the UK, where the supermarket change Morrison has joined Tesco in pledging to end their use of Higuishin cameras. Morrison's corporate affairs director confirmed via email that the chain had ceased purchasing Higuishin and Dahao CCTV camera in 2022 over ethical and security concerns around the corporations. According to the freetibet.org, at least 1.2 million Hikvision cameras are believed to be across the UK and are being used by over 200 local councils, as well as hospitals, police forces, schools and at army barracks. The 28 Game Chumo Memorial Gold Cup football tournament concluded on Sunday last week with the Dasa United Dharamshala winning the cup for the first time after defeating the six-time winner Tintubling FC Clementown in the final match. Dr. Nipun Jindal, Deputy Commissioner of Kangra District, graced the Game Chumo Memorial Gold Cup final as Chief Guest, along with the Guest of Honor, Acting Chief Justice Commissioner Kama Damdu from Central Tibetan Administration. The final was also attended by members of the Standing Committee of the 17th Tibetan Parliament in Exile, the Cabinet Secretary, Staramshala Settlement Officer, additional Secretaries of Central Tibetan Administration, and Heads of Tibetan NGOs as Special Guests. In the final, Dasa United and Tundubling FC stridently contested to lift the trophy, with the former coming out on the top 2-1.
Game Chumo Memorial Gold Cup is hosted every year to commemorate His Holiness the 14 Dalai Lama's great mother and this year's tournament commenced on 1st June with a total of 16 participating teams representing various Tibetan settlements and communities in the diaspora. On Friday last week, at the 16th annual Roll Call of Nations Rit Link Ceremony in Washington, D.C., the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation formally awarded the Truman Regan Medal of Freedom to Pujung Gate sitting from the International Campaign for Tibet for his lifelong dedication to promoting freedom and democracy in the face of communist tyranny in Tibet. Pujung Gate Sitting, who is currently leading the Research and Monitoring Unit for the International Campaign for Tibet, was introduced and presented this Medal of Honor by the Honorable Ambassador Paula J. Drobinski, who was also the former Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issues during President George W. Bush administration. Over 50 organizations representing various movements, ambassadors and representatives from the 14 embassies, including the embassies of Ukraine, the delegation of the European Union to the United States, Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office in the U.S. and the Office of Tibet participated in the events as a diplomatic missions. The Truman Regan Medal of Freedom is awarded to individuals who have demonstrated a lifelong commitment to freedom and democracy and opposition to communism and all other forms of tyranny since 1999. Some former honorees include His Eminence Václav Havel, His Eminence Leg Valenza, U.S. Senator Tom Lantos and Jesse Helms. The residential library of D.Y., a coastal suburb in New South Wales, Australia, opened a new section for Tibetan books on June 3rd with a brief commencement ceremony. Sui Hins, the mayor of the Northern Beaches Council, attended the event along with the Orina Esineto, director of D.Y. Library, and Myra Masterson, director of Northern Beaches Library. It was also attended by the President and Secretary of the Sydney Tibetan Association, students from the Regional Tibetan Language and Culture Weekend School, and members of the Tibetan community. Mayor Sui Hins, in her keynote address, said the area had a long standing connection with Tibetan people, and Tibetan is one of the top five spoken languages in DY. The director also said the inception of a new department for Tibetan books in DY Library is the first of its kind in Australia. Director Orina Asinato stated that the library had purchased around 800 Tibetan books and further set together about 1,000 volumes. She also said the library would further collect more Tibetan books for all age categories if the readership increased. That is all for this week's news edition on Tibet This Week. Thank you for watching Tibet TV.